Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sequoia Train uh, Lending. Sequoia Lending Training. So, if this is the first time that you are here with us in Sequoia, we have one mission. Our mission is to disrupt the commercial lending industry. We have been saying this over and over and over again. The reason being is that the longer that we stay in this industry, the longer that we realize that there's a huge disconnect between people who need the funding sources versus the funding sources. They have no idea how to find each other. Uh, unlike any other platform, if you are in real estate, if you're mortgages, if you're insurance, you know how to connect the client with the uh, service provider because that industry is already being disrupted. So it does not matter who you are, where you come from, how long you stay in the, have been in the United States, as long as you want to become a real estate agent or a loan officer or an insurance agent or whatever that, whoever that might be, all you have to do just to go out there and get a license, park your license, find a broker, boom, you become one of those um, professionals and you can start service the community. But however, in commercial lending, I said it many, many, many times, in commercial lending, when is the last time you see somebody out there saying, hey, I'm a commercial loan broker. I can give you $5 million to purchase their business. I can give you $10 million to buy that hotel. I can give you $30 million to refinance that apartment building. You don't see them out there. And that is because this industry for the longest time is a closed door industry. In Sequoia Lending, we are here. We have a mission. We are here not to just make a deal or two. We are here to disrupt this commercial, uh, this lending industry, disrupt this industry so that people that need the funding can plug into our our, our platform and, and find the funding sources that they need. And the same token for people who has the funding, uh, uh, have the resources, they can come onto our platform and also find the right project for their business as well. And that will benefit all of us in this room. We are agents and loan consultants on our platform. And I bet every single one of us already have a book of business that you can bring in. So today is what? Today is the 7th of January, only seven days into the new year. Is it, is it, is it January? Uh, uh, today is what? Today is the, the 10th, okay? The 10th of uh, January. We are already very busy in Sequoia. We have over 136 SEC submitted in since the new year, 136. You can do the math, 136. We have over 10 commercial projects that submitted in average one a day. And that those type of uh, those type of projects ranging from a few hundred thousand dollars purchasing a retail all the way up to the biggest project right now that we just got today is a $32 million hotel slash mixed use uh, refinance. So again, in another 10 uh, uh, deals already, we have about eight closing uh, scheduled this month. So again, it's going to be a very, very busy month for us. And we are heading up to New York tomorrow. We have a big group of people up in New York that we need to talk to. They love to come on to Sequoia. And just I say uh, 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 January 15th, we have a huge meeting uh, set up by Mr. Benny uh, with a group of realtors. So again, a lot of things are happening in Sequoia, and I would love everybody to be part of it. Don't just sit on the sideline and watch anymore. The watching game is done. Today, this year, 2024, is for you and I to become a participant. We need to get to the court and start playing this game, okay? So again, that's all I have for today's announcement. So today, we have a very, very good treat, okay? Uh, a very good friend of mine. Uh, all the way from Los Angeles, California. It, 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 well, as, as a matter of fact, it's Laguna Beach, California. Um, we met over the holiday uh, in one of the party. We start chatting and find out that, hey, he is a lender. There's a lot of things that he can do. Is And, and, and it, the things that he told me is music to my ears. It's just because when you come into commercial lending, ladies and gentlemen, remember one thing. Not all the lender are the same. Even though there's a lot of SBA lenders out there, but they're not the same. The way that they underwrite the loan is not the same. Uh, some of them is a lot more conservative than the other. But when I talk to Mr. Court right here, and he mentioned to me there's a lot of things that he can do. Wow, that's music to my ear. And immediately we submitted two deals to him. And he gave us a quote already. And looking at those quotes is ridiculous. I couldn't believe that he can do something like this and in such a, uh, 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 in, 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 in such a way. So I thought that, hey, if that is the case, Dane, why don't you come onto our platform, share with us what you can do, and we would love to do more business with you this year. So here he is. So ladies and gentlemen, please have the warmest welcome 
to Dane Port from New Day Funding. Dane, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. And uh, thank you for bringing me on the platform and, and meeting with all you guys. So a quick background on me. You know, Dane Court, New Day Business Finance, um, and New Day, we're a nationwide direct lender. Um, I got into real estate finance back in 2003, roughly. Uh, they, they, um, if you don't mind, you can share your screen if you don't mind. Okay, okay. Um, let's take a look here. We'll just go back to that, you guys. This is share screen. And go here, share. And let me go back into presentation here. Yeah, so hopefully you guys can all see my, uh, my screen here. So just a quick background on me before I delve into New Day and, and you know, what we do as a company. Um, I started my career in, I was a film major in college and got out, I was in film business and uh, got out and I got into residential uh, real estate lending. And it was great. I had a company that we built up. I had a few partners and we were one of the larger uh, lenders in the country. So doing tons of residential loans. And one of my partners was in commercial real estate finance back then. So that's when I started learning about commercial real estate finance from my partner. 2008-ish, um, the market was changing. The recession was coming and we decided to wind that company down. And I went into a smaller brokerage platform. Uh, we got away from the large direct lender platform, and I went more to a smaller brokerage platform. And I started realizing very quick that a lot of my residential clients needed help because they were in these large residential loans. They couldn't get out of them. They were adjustable loans, and they might have been negative amortization loans. So I started looking at their schedule of real estate, you know. And I started looking at the other properties that they had. And I'm like, well, what are these other properties that you guys have? You know, it's this commercial property over here. Looks like there's tons of equity in it. And I started figuring out how to start to refi some of those properties and pulling equity out of those properties, paying down their residential loans, and started qualifying them into better residential loans. They were happy. I started working with banks that were out there and, you know, bringing deals to them. Um, and it was very difficult back then because as Alan was saying, there's, it's a closed door industry, really. There's not a lot of people out there that are out there promoting themselves that they're a broker or they're a lender. It's very hard to find good people at a particular lender that's going to fit the criteria of your client. A lot of banks specialize in certain things. Some banks want to specialize in owner user finance. Some want to specialize in investor finance. Some want to specialize in asset-based lending. Lots of different options out there. So I started, you know, working as a broker and I started doing more and more commercial business. And as the residential field got very heavily regulated and a lot of changes were going on, the commercial market was a lot different, a lot easier to, to sort of break into, but it was hard at the same time because there just wasn't a ton of people out there that I can just connect with. So over the years, um, I built a good following on social media. I've become, you know, one of one of the partners here at a national, you know, direct lender uh, firm, and we built this. Uh, you know, I built my my backing up over many years of, of production. New Day Business Finance and New Day was was formed last year. Um, our company joined. We're publicly traded. Um, our parent company is. And we joined them. And I've been on the lending side since about 2013. So when we were putting together, um, you know, um, you know, when we were putting together, um, you know, just just looking at what's doable in the marketplace, um, New Day has a lot to offer. Um, it's something that a lot of other lenders are not doing right now. So when I was talking to Alan, you know, on a, a New Year's Eve. He was blown away about the programs that we have to offer, and he was blown away at the pricing that we have to offer as well. So I'll go through New Day. I'll explain what we do, and afterwards, if you guys have any you know, questions, just let me know, and we can start going from there. So um, New Day, for a national direct lender. Um, I like to be in counties that are above 100,000 people, you know, so it's um, we'll look at smaller counties, but anything that comes to your guys' desk or attention that's commercial real estate, 
you know, it's something that Al and I is going to start a basic conversation on. So national direct lender, which is hard to find. Um, and we're not a bank. We're a non-bank lender. So we're not asking for deposits to go with these transactions. A lot of banks right now, they really want deposits. It can be as high as a, I, I, I've heard people talk about a 30% loan to deposit ratio. If they're going to lend out a million dollars, they want $300,000 in deposits. That can kill a lot of commercial deals. So we're a non-bank lender. Um, so we have the ability to lend loans. We're not a bank, so we're not taking in deposits. So anything nationwide keeps to mind for that. What we do, we do owner user commercial real estate financing, and we also do investor commercial real estate financing. And a lot of you guys on the call might be saying, well, what's the difference? What's an owner user transaction and what is a investor transaction? And that can vary depending on lender. So the way that I sort of break it down is we do SBA loans, we do owner user, non SBA loans, and we do investor commercial real estate. So SBA loans, it's where the client is going to occupy 51% of that property for their business. It has nothing to do with them living in the property or not. Their business occupies 51% of that property and they use that for their business. For example, 10,000 warehouse, uh, 10,000 square foot warehouse facility, your client rents out 3,000 square feet and they occupy 7,000 square feet of that building. That could, could possibly be an SBA loan. And you can go up to a 90% loan to value on that. You can look at projection-based deals, you can look at lower credit scores, I mean, you can look at a lot of things and you can get that client higher leverage on that property. And basically what the government is saying is, hey, we want you guys to lend to small businesses, we're gonna make this less risky for you. So we do a lot of SBA 504 loans and that's one of our, one of our big things that we do. When it comes to owner user financing, let's just say that the client, you know, is more qualified and they want to buy, you know, a property and they don't want to utilize an SBA loan. Um, or they might only occupy 20% of the property opposed to that magic number 51%. That's when we start looking at non-SBA loans as well. So an SBA loan, 51% owner user, the second trust deed could be as high as five million in most instances. And the first trust deed is generally five million and below. So, you know, a ten million dollar property, they're putting a million dollars down. We're financing usually ninety percent on that. When it comes to conventional lending, that's where it differs with a bunch of different types of lenders. New Day will go down to a twenty percent owner occupancy and still look at that transaction is an owner user transaction. And let me give you an example. You have one of your clients that you're working with and they have a nail salon. And that nail salon is in a retail strip center. The retail strip center is 10,000 square feet. Your client has that retail nail center and they want to purchase the whole thing. And they occupy 3,000 square feet of that building. So we would look at that. We would look at the income from the retail nail center, uh, the nail shop, and then we're also going to look at the income from the rest of the property. And that's generally going to push up the loan to value higher than just a true investor deal. A lot of banks are going to treat that if she or he occupied 20% or 25% of the property, a lot of banks are still going to treat that as an investor property. They would underwrite differently on that. And the LTV would be usually lower because they're basing it just off the market rents. We would look at it potentially and say, well, that nail salon is making X amount of dollars plus the market rents are here. We might be able to get to a higher loan to value on that. When it comes to investor commercial real estate financing, that is basically where your client is buying the property and just wants to have tenant in the property paying rent in there. Go back to that retail center, 10,000 square feet. You have all these different tenants in there. You're buying that asset for a return on your money. You want a certain capitalization rate on your money or a cap rate abbreviated at. So when you look at that, 
we can do that type of financing as well. So not only does New Day have, you know, a national presence, we have owner user, we have investor and non-SBA loans available for what we do. Um, so lots of different options out there when it comes to the financing type. Um, SBA loans, my loans, we start at 250000 on our loans. One of the big things when we were, you know, when we were, uh, one of the big things that Al and I were talking about that's going to differentiate us from a lot of other groups, we have a 30-year fixed loan program. So most commercial loans, a lot of loans that are out there, when you get into financing, it's going to be a five-year balloon. It might be amortized over 25 years. And the lender says, hey, we're going to give you five-year money. It balloons in five years. We want our money back in five years. Another lender might come to you and say, well, I'm going to give you a five-year loan. It's going to reset after five years and be fixed for another five years, due in 10. And the amortization is going to be 20 or 25 years. So we have a true 30-year fixed program that's out there. The client does not need to worry about loans resetting. And when you start telling your clients that, yes, you have some commercial real estate options that offer a 30-year fixed loan, that's something that not a lot of people have. As I mentioned earlier, SBA loans, we can go up to 90% loan to value on transactions. Um, Different types of, of ways to get there with it, but generally that's to me the max LTV roughly around there that you're going to be able to get to. Um, we also have interest only options available. Sometimes clients are going to come to you and say, well, you know, I want my payment to be a little bit low, lower than a principal and interest loan. So we can look at a 30 year fixed loan. I can also do interest only option on that. So it would be interest only for 10 years up to after 10 years, it would re amortize and they would pay it back over the next 20. For our investor program, uh, this is not for the owner user program, but for our investor program, I have full dock options. And then we also have light dock options. And generally, when I say light dock, we're not asking for personal tax returns at that point. A lot of times people call me and say, hey, we want to, you know, buy this commercial real estate investment property. We don't want to give you our tax returns. Okay, let's look at a light dock option as well for you. Still a 30-year fixed loan on there. Um, <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of banks, a lot of lenders, they're very, um, very cautious on the types of properties that they lend on or very conservative and they don't want to lend on certain types of properties. Auto services, we'll look at all day long. I, I love the auto service business. I mean, there's plenty, plenty of business out there and a lot of people will stay away from it. A lot of people might stay away from it from environmental issues. We're always gonna get a phase one done on our properties on when we're looking at deals. And that's generally gonna tell us if there is an environmental issue up front. Auto services, we'll look at bed and breakfasts. We'll take a look at RV parks. A lot of people do not do RV parks. We'll take a look at them. Car washes, convenience stores, entertainment, recreational places, healthcare, hospitality. We love industrial properties. Um, that's another big one that we do a lot of. Mixed use properties. Mixed use can be many things. It can be retail downstairs. It can be apartments upstairs. It can be office up front. It can be warehouse in the back, a flex property. Um, we'll look at mobile home, oops, sorry. We'll look at mobile home parks. We'll look at apartment complexes, office, restaurants. We'll take a, a look at retail, self storage, warehouse, and maybe some other stuff as well. A lot of groups that are out there, they're just going to focus on a couple things, just industrial, you know, or they're just going to be multifamily. When you work with us in Allen, you guys will have the ability to look at you know, hopefully we're a one-stop shop for, for, you know, you guys now and over there. And we can see a lot of the business that comes in. Speed and timing. This is something that we put out um, recently on our social media. A lot of people say, well, how long are commercial loans going to take? You know, I don't have, you know, three months to make this thing work. Um, we got a loan submitted, approved, and funded in nine days. 
And that is almost unheard of. It says nine business days. Um, you know, they're, uh, that time frame. if Alan calls me, he needs to get a rush on something. We have a very flexible team internally that's working hard to make loans happen and to hit deadlines. But to get a commercial real estate loan done in nine days, almost unheard of. Um, you can see a picture of the property that we did. It was a 90% deal. 1.6-ish loan amount, and that is pretty pretty substantial on there. So if you guys have a rush deal, a lot of lenders are going to sit there, um, and Alan knows this as well, a lot of lenders are going to sit there and go through 45 days, and they're going to come back last minute and say, well, we're not going to be able to hit this time frame, um, or we're passing on the deal at this point in time. People can have money hard, earnest money deposits in. It could be a 1031 exchange that needs to close on time. We're known to be quick, you know, when it needs to be. I don't like to have these fire drills, but if you guys need it, we can probably move quickly on a deal. Um, so let's just keep looking here. My contact. So, you know, leading the way commercial real estate and business finance. Um, so to recap, you guys, we're national and i'm going to go into a little bit more of our our credit criteria a lot of you guys might be thinking to yourself well what do we need to get these things going what do we need to make these things happen on a lot of my loan to value when i'm doing these sba loans i go down to a 600 fico on a lot of transactions so a lot of people say well i don't want to give you tax returns i'm going to buy this building myself for my business and I'm going to run my business in there and I, I want the most leverage I can get and I don't want to put much down, but my tax returns are not looking that good. We do purchases based upon projections as well. So 85% loan to value, 80% loan to value. Could we go higher on that? Um, I say, give me your tax returns because you're buying a building that's in a better location than where you're at now. You're buying a building that has more square footage so you can handle more orders, it sounds like. You're the client. You know what, what you need to make your business successful. So educate me on why your tax returns in the past don't look that good and why this new business venture and this new building is going to help you get to the, to the next level for your business. So the client will work with us and Alan. They'll put together projections of where their business is going to go based off this new location, how many new hires they're going to bring in, how many new people they can hire. They're going to give detailed assumptions to that. They're going to get in there and say, based off this new location, I'm on a better street. I have more square footage. I can hit all this. Now, all of a sudden, they're financing 85, 90% loan to value on a building and coming in with 10% down on there. And this is a government-backed loan. People don't understand that. They're like, well, you, you guys can get the tax returns. Historically, they might not have been as strong as where they're going to be in the future. But now, all of a sudden, you know, they've got some great orders coming in. They might have some big fulfillment orders with, you know, large distributors, so on and so forth. They might they have a reason why they want to buy that property. We're here to look at that deal and try to make it happen. So I tell people, don't be afraid to give me your tax returns. Let's take a look at them. Obviously, you're buying this business for building for a reason. Let's figure that out and see if we can help you. Um, so that's, that's something that we'll look at. Um, when it comes to non-SBA loans, you know, people want to come in here. And a lot of people right now, they're looking to pull cash out of their commercial real estate buildings. A lot of people do not want to give cash out on a refinance. Um, basically, um, Cash out refi, I'll go to 65% loan to value on a commercial real estate building. And we can look at pulling some cash out of that building. They might want to use it for investments. They might want to use it for, you know, expansion of their business. Lots of different um, things to go with. So remember, when it's an owner-user facility, non-SBA, they occupy 25% or 20% or more of that property. Then we can start looking at, you know, maybe a cash out refi. If they have a lien tied to the property, it's a first and second, and we're paying off a first and second, that's not considered cash out. So I can go to higher loan to values on 
transactions like that. And when it comes to investor commercial real estate, um, let me scroll down here. Um, I'm generally going to 70% on a purchase. And then if they need cash out, we're going to probably get down to, uh, I think we're at 65% cash out on investor real estate as well. So a lot of people, if it's an owner user facility, hard to get cash out. It's a lot more difficult if it's an investment property to get cash out. A lot of people want that big loan to deposit ratio. Um, you know, so Alan knows our programs in detail. You know, he can always educate you guys more on, you know, what to look for, um, what to bring in. and He can place it with us. Um, he has direct communication to me. I'm the chief origination officer here. Um, and I basically can take his request and make sure that they get expedited and we get back to you guys very quick on the transaction. So, you know, Alan, if there's any questions at this point in time, I would love to take them and, you know, see if we can, you know, help out, um, you know, some, uh, maybe some active deals that are going right now. Okay, great. Um, before I ask uh, any questions, so I noticed that there are a few uh, new guests on this uh, call right here. So I just want to share with you what our platform is. Now, obviously, a lot of the things that Dane talked about is very technical. Now, if you've never been in the uh, funding world or as a loan officer, perhaps some of the things that he talked about, you have no idea what they are, what is LTV, what is uh, a DSCR, so on and so forth. So that is what Sequoia's platform is all about. Even though you do not know the detail, we you can still submit a deal to us and we have expert like Dane uh, or, or some other advisors in our platforms to review the, field, the the deals for you and analyze the deal for you and price the deal for you. So how does it work? So if you're new to us, bear with me. I'm going to just share with you what our platform looks like. So as an agent, every single one of us will have a, a website like this. So when you come to our website, obviously it gives you a little bit of information about what we do. But the most important thing is the product page. That's where our engine is. And this is all the products and services that we provide. So now right here, you notice that we have three different columns. We have the real estate funding. This is this column right here has a lot has everything to do with real estate related, whether you're purchasing a warehouse, purchasing an office building, so on and so forth. So if you don't know what to do, or the best thing to do is just to come in here. Now, obviously we are working with commercial buildings. So all you have to do is just to come into commercial property mm -hmm. right here, click on apply and give us some basic information. For example, the client's information, what is the loan purpose? Is that a purchase? Is that rate and term? Is that a cash out? Now, also, what is the usage of that property? So right here, you can select 100% investment, just like what Dane say, you, you know, it's just a return of your money, or you purchase this building for your own use or for the client's own use. Or in some cases, they purchase a commercial property, they use portion of it, they rent out portion of it. So again, so you select what the usage would be and give us some basic information. Now, you don't even have to fill this out. All you have to do just to send this link to your client and have them to fill it out or send this link to the listing agent, have them to fill out the basic information. And once they filled out all the information, for example, what is the cash out? What is the loan amount that won? What is the asset is value? What's the property tax insurance? Why do we ask for all these? It's because the more information that we ask for or that you can collect for us, the better the picture would be, the clearer the picture would be. And now when we have those data, we can actually uh, compile together to calculate what the DSCR looks like. What the what uh, uh, can, is this a stabilized property or is it a non-stabilized property? So we have a better understanding about the entire project from that point on. Then we have enough data to discuss with Dane um, to talk about these deals. Okay, so all you have to do just to fill all this information, and after that, you would just hit, need to hit the submit button. Now, after you hit the submit button, you as the loan officer, you will receive an email, okay, from the system. So the so do we uh, in, in, in the back office. So if you submit or if your client submits something and you never receive an email, most likely it means that the, the submission is not successful, that you have to go back and resubmit it to us again. So once we have it within 24 to 48 hours for those deals that, uh, that it's simple deals, Within 24, 20, 24 to 48 hours, you should hear something back from us. 
But of course, if you're talking about some much bigger deals in the tens and 20 and $30 million deal, obviously it takes a little bit longer. Okay. So again, just want to share with everyone what our platform looks like. And if you are new to us, my suggestion is that at least go through the all of our product. Uh, we're adding it more and more services or products or to our platform. So the real estate funding is for real estate related funding. The business funding is for funding that has nothing to do with real estate. For example, people need equipment loans, purchasing of the truck, walking capital, so on and so forth. So this is where you go to. And of course, we have the business service as well. And we will expand this list as well uh, as more and more servers come on board onto, onto our platform. And right now, the hardest thing that we are working on is the SETC, self-employed tax credit that if you are 1099, if you know anybody that is 1099, we can help them to get up to $32,000 per person from the federal government. This is not a loan. This is actually a refund on their self-employed tax that they already paid to the government and now the government is paying them back. So to a lot of business people, when they come to us look for funding, we have many different ways to allow to 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 look for fundings uh, uh, dollars for them to fund their businesses. So again, my suggestion is to get familiarized with all the uh, different type of funding so, uh, funding product and services that we have. And um, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to contact us and feel free to you know reach out to us. So at this point, any questions from any one of us, feel free, comments, suggestions, questions, got a deal to talk about? Feel free. Well, if not, then I just share with you the two deals that any anyone. Uh, hey, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. Hey, Alan, it's Mo. Hey, Mo, you feel better today? Uh, I'm hanging in there, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, quick question. Just wanted to uh, just touch base on the deal that we talked about earlier. Yep. Uh, the one in Chicago. Uh, this is a. Uh, it would be a quick claim of a property that uh that is a full gut but we would like to quick claim it to the uh to an llc yep. with the parties of uh well two people with well someone with a higher credit score so we can refinance that so uh the question was or is uh is there any seasoning issues once the quick claim is done is that the proper way to do this uh, in terms of being able to refinance this property because the owner cannot do it because her credit is really suppressed. So she wants to quit claiming over to the LLC. Okay. So let me summarize what Mo just talked about. Okay. So he found Mo is a fix and flipper. He goes out there, look for property, ugly property, fixing them up, turn them into a beautiful property and sell it. Okay. So that's what he does. So what he's talking about is that, he found the property free and clear, and he wants to do a quick claim deed to that property, which means that he will or his team is going to own that property. Okay. Now, after he owns that property, he wants to do a cash out refinance on that property to use the money to renovate the building or renovate the property and he sells it. So Correct. the question that he's asking is that after he does the quick claim deed into his LLC, are there any seasoning? Now, the... The, the answer is that there are many lenders out there do have six months of seasonings, okay? Because they don't want to have any fishy things going on, what you're doing, why, why you're doing quick claim D and things like this. Um, but we do have lenders that does not require seasoning. And as a matter of fact, I already talked to Jared about this. Yes, we can definitely do it. So I'm going to connect you with Jared. Uh, tomorrow or whenever you feel better so that he can walk you through exactly how to get this thing done. So the answer to your particular case is yes, we can do it. Okay. Uh, I see. Uh, did I answer your question, Mo? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Get, okay. Uh, Arola, I saw your hand. It's raised. Uh, Arola. Oh, so I think she, Okay, Jesse, why don't you? Uh, yes, good afternoon. A couple of a couple of really quick questions on your SECT. Can the employer be a ten ninety nine employer? Yes, that's all we talk about. Of that? 
1099, absolutely. Any 1099 can qualify for it. Yes. So as an independent 1099, they can take advantage of the Yes, absolutely. There's 80 million people out there that can qualify for it. So go out there and start hitting the hitting the market. Okay. Uh, let, let's focus in to ask questions that Dane can help us to answer. Okay. Okay. And the next one. Yes. If I could really quick is we have a, a strip mall. The uh, potential buyer has two spaces in that in that uh, strip strip mall, but he wants to finance the uh, five point eight million. But he's asking the seller if he would do a twenty percent carry back and get financing for um, uh, seventy five percent, and he'll come in with five percent. Is that possible? Thing. Yeah. I, um, so seller carry back in our world is is possible, definitely on that. So, I mean, Jesse, a couple things that you'd want to ask them, you know, um, because we want a long term solution, hopefully for them. You know, so if the seller, you know, because on, well, and, and real quick here, Jesse, I mean, before you get too deep into it, he occupies, the client occupies two spaces in that center, correct? You know, on a, when you, when you start talking to clients about that, you want to start talking about square footage as well, percentage okay. of square footage. So if it's, if, is it 20% that he's going to occupy or is it, 51% that he's going to occupy with his two spots in there. Yeah. So that's one thing that you can look at um, because you could maybe get to a higher loan to value. For example, if, if he was going to occupy 51% with his two spots in there, we can probably finance 90% loan to value, 85% loan to value, 80% loan to value. He can come in with five and then, seller can carry a less of a down payment on there. Mm -hmm. So find out the square footage on there. I would have an interest either way in the transaction. Okay. You want to find out also how long that seller wants to carry that financing for, you know, you don't want to set your client up for failure when, right. you know, he's going to carry 20% and he's coming with five, but your client wants, you know, the seller wants his money back within 12 months then how are you going to get out of that situation? We can get you a loan probably today, but you've got to think to yourself, is this a long-term solution with the seller carry back or a short-term solution? And then you also got to figure out the square footage that your client currently has. Another thing to think about too on this, Jesse, is what is their intention after they buy the property? Because it doesn't necessarily have to be 51% today. Right. If their intention is to occupy more than 51% within the next 12 months, let's just say, for example, your client's buying the center. He has two locations in there, which is more than one, right? He has two. Maybe he wants to expand three and four and expand his location. So that's another question that I would be asking your client too. What are your plans after you buy it? The seller might have a bunch of month to month tenants in there. And your client might say, well, after I buy it, I want to expand into 70% of the, of the center. And these month-to-month -month clients, let's get rid of them at that point. And then we're going to expand my business. So either way, I would take a look at it as a conventional loan, first and foremost, then we would back into an SBA loan if it, if it didn't work yet. Okay. All right, sir. Get that out to you all in a day or so. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey. Okay, great. Uh, Aurora? Yeah, thank you. I'm so sorry. I hit the wrong button before. Right. Um, we have somebody that wants to buy an investment house here in Cape May, New Jersey, um, at a beach, beach resort that has high rentals for the homes. It's a first-time buyer, but wants to go into the investment arena. Can New Day help someone like that? And Aurora, when you say investment home, are we talking about a one to four unit property? It's a it's a one family. It's a one family home that can be rented out yeah. at least uh, probably around sixteen weeks, if not more, out of the year here in Cape May. Yeah, that would not be for New Day. That would probably be for one of our sister companies or any other company. I mean, Alan has a lot of homes for something like that, and he knows our sister company as well. Yep. So um, I, I would imagine that he has a lot of options for you when it comes to one to four units where I would get involved in five plus units. 
So if they okay. wanted to buy five plus units, that's where I would start looking at that one. Fabulous. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Let me tell me in Aurora. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. We are funding a lot of this type of client, uh, 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 this type of investors, one to four unit. Yes, we have a lot of homes for it. As long as they set up a company as an LLC, they can use the LLC to purchase this property. We don't care about their personal income. They could be a foreigner, just lend it in the United States. As long as they can show the down payment. And also as long as the property can show that it can generate income, then we can fund that all day long. So that's not an issue. And even what if they don't have experience? And so the that is absolutely fine. No problem at all. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, Donald. Hey, Dane. How you doing? This is Don Moore up in the DMV. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I know you said nationwide, but do you also handle uh, international? And uh, is there a maximum? Uh, at this time, we do not do international, just uh, just the U.S. on there. And our max loan amount generally will get to about $5 million, uh, on the first trustee. Our second trustees can be as high as $5 million as well. So, Great, great. Thank you. Okay, Kelly. Sorry, right. I had myself on mute. <laughs> All right. Hi, Dane. Um, this could be for Dane. Hi, or Mr. Wu. I have a um, client who wants to buy a wedding venue business in Missouri, and he states that he needs 600K, but he wants to, he wants to assume the business and keep the existing 3 million SBA loan in place. Is that something we can help him with? Assume the business and keep the existing SBA loan in place. Um, yes. Let me think here. An SBA loan is generally, generally going to be put out there um, to, you know, you're going to have a borrower and a guarantor with it. So that existing lender on that real estate piece, if there's a change in ownership, they would have to notify the SBA of the change of ownership and a big material change where they're going to sell the business basically in the property. My guess is that they're going to want that SBA loan paid off because it would probably put that loan into default. So that's the first thing that I would look at. You really wouldn't want your client buying the business and then having this defaulted loan in place, you know, so check you, you would want to, you know, maybe talk to your client and see if that is an option to even assume the business. Because if they assume the business, that's more than likely the um, borrower or the guarantor on that SBA loan. And that could potentially put, you know, the seller in violation of that loan. And then the borrower, you know, he's buying a loan that's in default or he's taking over a business that has a loan in default. So you might want to look at it. Um, you might want to, the way that it might be pieced together on something like this, maybe we look at an SBA 504 transaction to acquire the real estate. And then potentially we can work with Alan on finding a lender that would maybe back in and do a business acquisition for the 600,000. Maybe, maybe we can pull in another lender to do that. And generally it would be a, 10-year amortized loan for maybe an SBA 7A transaction. And he would probably put 20% down on the 7A transaction, 10% down on the SBA 504 transaction. That way the seller is not going to default on a loan and your client gets a, you know, a, a good property. Now, if it's special use, change of ownership, he might be putting 20% down on the real estate as well. So we would have to really get into it, look at it, but if someone okay. called me on that transaction, you know, it, it would, it would, you would just want to structure it a little bit better on that end. Okay. Thank you. But, but, but it sounds, you know, I mean, it sounds like a good transaction on that, but uh, you know, I've been, I've been in this industry for a while and sometimes people will do a change of ownership on an SBA loan and they're trying to refinance it later, or they do a change of ownership on a conventional loan. They're trying to refinance it with an SBA loan and you look at it and you're like, well, the other loan doesn't seem to be in good standing because 
the loan is made to so and so, but this is the new client applying and trying to pay it off. So just when you get into this business, you want to avoid future issues with the client. So um, look into that a little bit, but definitely willing to look at, at the real estate acquisition of it and working with Alan to piece the deal together. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, uh, Polly? Thank you, Alan. How are you doing? Happy New Year's, by the way. And Dane, to you, Dane. Um, I have a question. I actually just acquired my very first uh, 2024 client for the year and everything. And he's a, uh, a roofing general contractor in Los Angeles, California. And he uh, is interested in actually acquiring some heavy equipment financing. Is that the um, other business finance uh, products and services you can provide with New Day? Yeah, and Alan knows that as well. So we do have right. um, we we do have secondary market options for equipment financing, okay. and we can look at equipment financing all day. Especially, okay. I mean, for a roofing general contractor in LA, um, you know, there's there's probably plenty of options out there for him. Yeah, I, I would assume so. I mean, he's actually doing only right now, I believe, just residential, but he's trying to. Uh, get his sales team to actually acquire some uh, commercial contracts and stuff like that. So I actually just got referred to him yesterday by his accountant on Alignable. So she uh, made the arrangement for him to give me a call and all that. And then we talked yesterday for about 30 minutes on the phone. And I will be doing another interview with him tomorrow, you know, to see where he's at with his finance. Because he's been like, in the business for about 10 years with this current corporation. So he's not, he's not like a startup or anything like that. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And, and something to add to that, Paulie, um, you know, we're, we're always looking to, you know, help clients out. And it's a long-term relationship that Alan, exactly. Alan and I both know of. So, you know, when I, when I would talk to someone like that, a lot of contractors, they don't want a big real estate play. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes to like a building, they want to have a smaller building and a big yard, like a contractor yard. So, right. Because I do know so that he's wanting, he's wanting to get about, I, I think, a lot of like dump trucks and other yep. various types of like, you know, dumpsters to, for the for the shingles to go in when he's at a, at a job site, at a, res, at, a, at a, you know, at a, at a customer's house. Well, and that's, that's something that, you know, that can be... A, an added feature that I that I do for my clients and you know for Alan and for whoever, if you guys come to me too and you say, hey, you know the client is looking to, you know, not only buy this equipment, but they're always going to be on the lookout for a good piece of real estate in their area. We right. can go into our databases and try to pull that out for you. You just give okay. us, you know. Let us know the, the area code, zip code that they're looking in, some requirements, and we can come back and give you some, some of our data and say, here's, you know, maybe 20 different options for your client. You guys okay. are doing the financing end on it and helping them out with Alan, and then we can back into helping you guys with the, the real estate and the equipment at that point. But, you know, um, that's, that's one thing that, that, you know, I try to help clients out to, um, so, and, and one other thing on top of that, Paulie, any other questions uh, on that one? Particular? Uh, as, no, as of right now, no, actually you did a very good job. Thank you so much, Dane, for your, for your time. Yeah. One thing that I talked to Alan about earlier too, you know, prospecting and going out there and finding additional business, you know, all you guys on here know how to get clients and, and work on, you know, getting clients and your centers of influence and all that. Right. One of the stuff that I have a lot of people on our team, you know, do as well. A lot of clients are in adjustable rate loans. You know, they're in these adjustable SBA 7A loans okay. that are out there. The prime interest rate right now is at eight and a half percent. Most of these clients, when they got an adjustable 7A loan on the property, probably was about six and a quarter. They're up to 11 and a quarter right now. Jeez. So, you guys can, if you guys have a title rep or, you know, Alan can probably do a training on this with you guys and, and help you guys out on this later, but you might be able to get a title account set up with Alan and you guys can start going through and looking at public records. You guys can look at 
commercial real estate properties, and you guys can start filtering and say, well, these guys have an SBA 7A adjustable loan. Mm -hmm. This is all public information, public records, and you guys can start looking through all that stuff and looking how to refinance people and get them into fixed rate loans opposed to these high adjustables. So just another thing that Alan and I talked about, how to get business, that might be a way for a lot of you guys to to start getting more commercial real estate leads. Absolutely. That sounds like a very, very good, uh, you know, resource to actually dive into. And I'll go, I'll, I'll give Alan a call uh, later, uh, later this week. And sure. hopefully we can discuss that. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Um, see Thank two you more hands. Much, yep. We still have two more hands. Uh, Donald. Yeah. I, I was just, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I was just saying, uh, I'm, I'm new at this and I was just wondering, I have a client that interested in building a, uh, uh, a, a beauty supply manufacturer in Canada, would would they would they qualify? If you say they're Canada, building outside of the U.S., yeah. outside of the U.S., that would be a pass for us, Donald. Okay, thank yeah. you. But Alan might have some some leads for a Canadian-based group. I don't know if he does or not, but uh, that might be something that he can help you out with. Yeah, outside of the United States, we do have lenders that can do it, but it got to make sense. Uh, if you're talking about anything that's in south of $20 million, it, it, the lender just not interested because the loan amount is not attractive enough. If you're talking about in Canada, we're talking about loan amount minimum $20 million. You're talking about yeah. Europe, Mexico, you're talking about at least minimum $50 million. And we are working on a few deals in Mexico right now. It's a, it's a hotel resort. One is a $50 million deal. The other one is $75 million deal. So... That type of deals that, yeah, we, we might have a source for it, but anything <laughs> south of that number, it's not going to work. It just doesn't make sense. Right. Uh, Mo? Yeah, hey, I got one more question for you, uh, Dane. Um, I've got a, uh, a client that's trying to purchase a, uh, a bundle package, uh, 17 properties, uh, which is uh, single-family homes and commercial mixed-use. Uh, collectively, what does that look like in terms of funding? Like, how does that work? Is just a regular bundle deal? or a... um, So generally on something like that, what we would probably want to, you know, work on together, be you and, and Alan on that, get a list of the 17 properties, right, and see what we can do. We would close yeah. concurrently, but I would – I would try to have the commercial real estate pieces all broken out separately on it. Yeah. And people come to us on bundle packages all the time. It's a little bit more paperwork, a little bit more title fees on everything um, and appraisals. But I would say, Hey, opposed to doing one bundle loan against everything, let's try to break up as much as we can on here. Cause that way when the seller, when the clients want to sell in the future, they're able to, they can sell off one off properties opposed to trying to break and go back to the lender and say, well, I, I want to sell off this asset and it's going to take forever um, and then disrupt the pool. So my experience, it's best to break them up and we just close concurrently all at the same time. Okay. Perfect. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any, uh, any more questions? Okay, looks like that's all we have. Well, thank you so much, Dane, for coming to our platform today to share with us all these useful information. So this is what Sequoia is all about. It's not just about making you know a deal or two, but also we have seminar like this or training like this to share with everybody what commercial lending is all about. It's just to unveil this mystery space. A lot of people out there understand what commercial lending the word is, but actually what commercial lending is, a lot of people out there do not know what it is. So again, if you have anybody that's interested to in commercial lending, bring them on board. Let them to see what we what we do. We do need people to go out there to help us to market. And hey, that's it, it's a totally blue sea right here. There's not many people out there doing commercial lending and not many platforms out there like us that provide so many different services for our client and our agents to choose from. So again, thank you so much, Dane, and uh, for coming online today thank you, to, uh, thank you. to share with us. Definitely, we will, just like I say, I will go this year, 100 million. Okay, hundred million this year. What we're hoping for. Absolutely, not hoping for. We are doing it right now. Okay, okay. Do it. Yeah. Yep. Next, next week, guys. Next week we have a heavy, heavy hitter joined our Sequoia advisor team. Okay, 
this person used to be the senior, I would say senior management in a company called LendingTree.com. Anybody know what LendingTree.com is? We have a senior person join Sequoia, become our advisors, will be here uh, helping us to pricing uh, one to four units, construction loans, apartment buildings, so on and so forth. So next Wednesday, do not miss it. You will hear why he joins Sequoia, what he sees, what commercial lending is all about, and most importantly, how he can help every single one of us. And his goal is to train us to go out there to generate deals so that we can close at least three to five deals a month as a part-timer. Okay, guys, without further ado, thank you so much for another uh, episode, and I see everybody next Wednesday night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.